Today is May 13th, and we're going to talk about um, displacement and total distance um, of a particle that's being moved, okay? So we're looking right now at a velocity graph, and I'm going to put some units on this, okay? So that the vertical axis is velocity, and let's just make it simple, and let's say it's being measured in meters per second, okay? And so this the horizontal um, axis would be time, and it would be measured in seconds, okay? All right, and let's say right here, this point right here is some time, okay? And it's, let's say it's 15, okay? So this would be T, I'm gonna call it T sub one. Okay, so T sub one comma 15, because I'm also want one right here, and I'm just gonna call that a different time, and I'm gonna call it T sub two, okay? And let's say this one is T sub two comma negative five. Okay, so what does that mean? At T sub one, the velocity is 15 meters per second, okay? Now, what I drew here in the shaded area is a rectangle, right? And it's representation of one of the rectangles um, in the, like a Riemann sum, okay? And so let's say this delta X is two seconds, okay? Okay, so then the width of this rectangle would be two, Okay, and the units would be seconds, and then the height of it would be this function value, right? This would be V of 15, okay? Or sorry, V of T sub one, which would be 15, okay? So this is 15 meters per second, okay? So what does that give us if we multiply this? Okay, so this area in here, that'd be 15 meters per second times two seconds. Our seconds would cancel, and we'd be left with 30 meters, okay? So I'm gonna write 30 meters going sideways here. So this is 30 meters, okay? And what it would be is, since that's positive, okay, that would mean, okay, that in those two seconds, the particle or whatever's moving, okay, moved 30 meters to the right, okay? If we're, if we're talking about being moved on the x-axis, okay? Because you'd be moving left and right. Okay, so over here, this one is a little bit different, okay? So this one, it's the same width as this one, so it's still two seconds. Okay, and then this height, okay, is negative five meters per second, okay? So um, this would be negative five, the area of this would be negative five times two or negative 10 meters. Okay, so we've moved right and we've also moved left if we're talking about a particle moving on the x-axis, right? So the displacement is, is defined as the change in position, okay? And how do we get this area? Well, how do we get the area is we integrate, right? And we would integrate from, from this point to this point. And all of this would be the total distance that we moved right. And this would be the distance that we would move left and we combine them and we would get how much it changed by okay so we so we would be able to figure out okay if we know what the position is initially then we could figure out what the position is at this end time okay all right so let, i'm going to slide down a little bit okay so i'm going to define let's slide this down a little bit okay displacement and that's a physics term okay it's really just in, in calculus terms, it's just net change or net area, okay? And let's call this point right here B, uh, let's call this B, this end right here B, and I'm gonna call this transition point where it switches from positive to negative, I'm gonna call that A, okay? And then of course, let me slide it back up, this right here would be zero. Okay, so we could get the displacement of this particle or the net change by simply integrating from zero to B of the velocity function, just flat out the velocity, V of T, DT, okay? And if this is moving on the x-axis, the antiderivative of V would be X, okay? So this would be X of B minus X of zero, okay? All right? Now, I'm gonna tell you right here, okay, so this is back to, this is A and this is B, and let's say this area, okay, 
without the rectangles would be 500 meters. Okay, and then this down here, let's call that negative 200 meters. Okay, so the difference between these, okay, would be 500 plus the negative 200. And so the displacement would be 300 meters. Okay, so yes, it moved right and it moved left and it moved more right than it did left and the net change winds up being 300 meters, okay? That's called displacement, okay? Now, if I wanna do total distance, okay, that would be different than displacement, okay? Disp displacement is the change in position. So from, the, from when we started the time to when we ended it, what was, what's, the, what's the change? What's the difference between the start and the finish? And in this case, it'd be 300 meters to the right, okay? But if you talk about how far it traveled, well, it traveled 500 meters to the right here, but here it moved 200 meters to the left. So how far did it travel? Well, we've got to make this become positive, right? And we can do that a couple different ways, okay? And if we integrated that, that'd be total distance, okay? So total distance Okay, we could, we could get by taking, you could, you could do it with one integral, but I'm going to tell you, the way I'm going to show you right now, it's, it, this way is best with a calculator, okay? All right, so this would be, um, if we could make, we could keep this positive and we could make this positive by just taking the absolute value of it. Because remember from last year in Honors Math 3 and earlier this year, okay, and with when we did speed graphs, okay, if we took the absolute value of velocity, that took any negative velocity and actually flipped it and made it become positive. So this part down here would actually flip over the x-axis and it'd be this part right here, okay? So we could, we could get the total distance traveled by, okay, integrating zero to b of the absolute value of v of t dt. And I did talk about this when we were doing the um, AP exam review, okay? All right, how would you do this if you had to do it by hand? So this is great with a graphing calculator, perfect. Set it up like this, graphing calculator all the way. Good job, okay? How would you do it if you didn't have a graphing calculator? How would you do this by hand? Well, you'd have to break this up into two integrals, okay? So another way of doing this would be to integrate from zero to this A, that's why I called this one A, of simply the velocity, V of T dt. And then I would need to subtract this negative part, okay? So this is the same, this is equivalent as finding total area, okay? So then we'd subtract the integral from A to B of V of T dt, okay? And then we wouldn't need to use the absolute value, okay? So um, why would you do this, okay? Because if I, if I know if I integrate A to B, because the function's below the x-axis or the t-axis, okay, I know it's going to come out to be negative, all right? And then if I subtract that integral, okay, that would actually turn it and become positive, okay? So this would wind up being 500 plus 200, which is 700 meters, and I just want to, I want to point this out so you understand there's two ways to do it. You could do it with absolute value. This is good with technology. Let me get a different pin. This way right here, when you do the absolute value of this, right? This is, this is a good way to do using technology. You know, Desmos or graphing calculator. But it's not so good to do it by hand because it's really hard to integrate an absolute value function, okay? And this way would be better... Um, if we had to find it by hand, if we had to do it ourselves, okay, and not rely on technology, okay? And you should, you should be aware of both, okay, because if you have technology, you could do it this way, all right? Okay, now, how could we get our new position, okay? Like, what's the position at the very end, okay? Like, what is, the very end would be X of, X of B, right? So, we could get X of B. All right, and let me slide this up a little bit. 
X of B, which would be the new position, it would equal the initial position that we started at, right? X of zero. So we know where we started. And if we add the net change or the displacement to this, we would have the final position. So if we know what the change is and we add it to the original, right? The initial amount, then we would know what we would have at the end. We would know how much distance we have, okay? So this would be X of B is equal to X of zero, okay? Um, plus the integral from zero to B of um, V of T dt. This is just a manipulation of this one, okay? Because if you look, here's my displacement right here, right? That's this. If I add X of zero to both sides, right? This is the initial condition, right? This is the initial position. And I'd be left with, if I added the integral to X of zero, I'd be left with this X of B. That's where this actually comes from. It comes from the fundamental theorem of calculus, okay? So this is how you get new position, okay? So the, so the final position, you could call it new position, final position, okay? So this would be, let me put this in red, okay? This right here would be the final, final position. And this right here would be the initial position. And what is this integral? That's the displacement or net change. Displacement is reserved for when you're talking about motion, okay? But if you had like gallons per minute, that this would be equivalent to you know, net change if you, you were talking about like gallons per minute instead of meters per minute or meters per second, okay? All right, let's go to our first example. Let's do some problems. So for this first example, what we want to do is we're given the velocity function in meters per second of a particle moving along the x-axis. And then what we want to do is determine when the particle is moving to the right to the left and then stopped, okay? So let's figure out where it stopped, okay? So we know the we know it stopped, okay? And we're only, <clears throat> excuse me, we're only looking for the time between zero and pi over two, okay? So we know it stopped when the velocity is zero. So we're gonna do V of T is equal to zero, okay? So that'd be six sine of three T would have to equal zero. Okay, so that'd be where in sine of three t is equal to zero. Okay, so sine is gonna equal zero, okay, um, when, um, and, and I should say this, okay, so we, sh we to figure this out, okay, we gotta look at um, three times zero, so we gotta look at zero less than or equal to three t less than or equal to three pi over two, because we're tripling all of these, okay? Okay, so we only need to worry about time values between zero and three pi over two, okay? So that would mean three t. When is, when is sine equal to zero between zero and three pi over um, two? So it would happen at zero, okay? When else would it happen? Well, it would ha also happen, sine would be zero, okay? When um, it would equal pi, okay? and then at two pi, right? Okay, so this would only happen at t is equal to zero divided by three is zero, and also at pi over three. Okay, all right, so, um, and, and pi over three is less than pi over two, right? Okay, so these are the two times. So the particle stopped, we can answer this question right now, the particle stopped at t equals zero and t equals pi over three because um, v of zero is equal to zero and v of pi over three is equal to zero, okay? And that's how we know it stopped because the velocity is zero for those two times. Okay, so how do we know when it's moving to the right and to the left? Well, bet, uh, the best thing to do is kind of make a sign chart, okay? So we have our intervals. Okay, and we go zero to pi over three. And then pi over three to pi over 
two, okay? And we're gonna look at V of, or well, let's do a test point. Okay, so a good test point in here would be like pi over six. And in here, okay, now this one's gonna be hard, okay? So the, the thing to do is to look at this and go, okay, this would be good if, um, if these were common denominators, right? Because then we could find something behind, in between, okay? So if we make this six, right, this would be two pi over three, I'm sorry, two, uh, two pi over six, okay? And this one as six would be three pi over six, right? Okay, so we still can't get something in between because we go from two pi to three pi, right? So let's up our, let's multiply by two over two. So this would be four pi over 12. And we multiply this, this would be six pi over 12, okay? All right, so then we could use five pi over 12. And this is if we didn't have a calculator, okay? If we, if we had a calculator, we just pick, pick a number in between there, okay? Um, and then we're looking at the sine, okay? So from zero to pi over, from zero to pi over three, if we put pi over six in here, that'd be three pi over six, right? And three pi over six would be pi over two. And so this would be positive, okay? Five pi over 12, okay? If we put that in, okay, to t is equal to pi over five pi over 12, or t is equal to five pi over 12, that would be, okay, so this angle right here would be 15 pi over 12. Well, we know 12 pi over 12, okay, is the negative x axis. So 15 pi over 12 would put in that third quadrant, that bottom left quadrant, okay? And we know that sine is negative there. So this is negative. Okay, so what does that mean? It's moving right on this interval. Now it's not moving right at zero because it stopped and it's not moving right at pi over three, okay? But it is moving right on every value between those, okay? So we would say the particle is moving right for, and I'm gonna do interval notation here, um, zero less than t less than pi over three because v of t is greater than zero for zero less than t less than pi over three. Okay, now is it moving left here? Okay, so let's let's think of pi over two. Okay, so pi over three, it's not, it stopped, right? So it can't be moving left at pi over three because that's when it stopped, okay? But could it be moving to the left at pi over two, okay? So this would be um, three times pi over two, okay? And three pi over two would be negative, right? Because sine is negative there, right? Because that's, that's right on the negative x, negative y axis, okay? So we would say the particle is moving left for pi over three less than t, less than or equal to pi over two. Because at pi over two, the velocity is negative at that time, okay? Because v of t is less than zero for pi over three less than t less than or equal to pi over two, okay? And that's the reason why, okay? So we know when it's moving left, we know when it's moving right, we also know when the velocity is positive and we also know when it's negative, okay? All right, for part B, what we wanna do is we wanna find the particle's displacement for the time interval zero to pi over two and then if s of zero is equal to five. Now I'm gonna change this because it's moving on the x-axis, so really this should be s of zero, Okay, S is usually used for position, okay? Um, I'm gonna change it to X, okay? X of zero is equal to five. I wish I had done that, sorry. I didn't fix it on the notes when I printed these, okay? A long time ago. So what, and then, so if X of zero is equal to five, okay, so that's the initial position, right? They wanna know what is the particle's final position, okay? So if you know a position, okay, you can find another position because you can use displacement um, to either add or subtract 
from that position to get another position, okay? All right, because that's what dis displacement is. It's the change in position. So if you know the displacement and you know a position, you can get another position, okay? All right, so hopefully that kind of makes sense, okay? But for this, we're gonna write, okay, so we're gonna first find just the displacement, okay? So displacement, Is going to equal and it's the integral right it's the integral from in this case 0 to pi over 2 okay and it's the it's the velocity function and that was 6 sine of 3t and then dt okay so when we integrate this because this is v of t that's going to give us x at pi over 2 um, minus x of zero okay all right okay so now let's figure out this integral though right because it's it's um we can use integration by substitution okay so here's the thing if we let u be this 3t right because that's an inside function if u is equal to 3t then du would have to be 3 dt and within the six there's a three right this is three times two so i'm going to bring the two out because i really don't need it for my du Okay, so this becomes 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2, okay, um, 3 sine of 3t dt, okay, because now I can make my u substitutions, because this 3 and this dt is my du, and this becomes u, so it's just, it's just sine of u, okay. Now, I got to change my limits of integration, right, okay, so this is equal to, 2 times the integral of, and this just becomes sine of u du. Okay, and we're going to do this from, and then we're going to change these x, or these t values, we're going to change them to u values, okay? So what is 3 times 0? Well, it'd still be 0, okay? What is 3 times pi over 2? Well, it would be 3 pi over 2, okay? And then the, the integral of sine is negative cosine, right? So this is going to come out to be negative 2 cosine of u. So this is equal to negative 2 cosine of u. Um, I'm going to put parentheses around that. Evaluated from 0 to 3 pi over 2. Okay, so that'd be negative 2 cosine of 3 pi over 2 minus, right, minus, but we're, it's, we're going to be subtracting a negative, right? So that's going to actually be plus 2 cosine of 0, okay? Now, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, right? So this whole thing's going to be 0 right here. And cosine of 0 is 1, okay? So this would be 2 times 1, or 2. Okay, so I know my displacement is equal to Two. That's the change in position, right? Okay. So I know that I can find x of pi over 2, the position at time pi over 2, okay? And we could take the initial position, right, 5, and add the displacement, okay? And the displacement would be the integral from 0 to pi over 2 v of t dt, okay? Well, we know this just came out to be 2, right? So this would be 5 plus 2, or 7. So I know the location, okay, of the particle at pi over at time pi over 2. It's at 7 on the x-axis. So it's on the positive side, okay? All right, so let's go on to part C. All right, so to find the total distance um, traveled by the particle, okay, we need, it's another integral problem, but, but what we're going to integrate is going to be different, okay? And to find the total distance the particle traveled, that'd be between, between not between, <laughs> between 0 and pi over 2, right? Okay, so the total distance traveled would be equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 times the absolute value of v of t dt, okay? Now, okay, so this, this would be how you do it with technology, okay? You could just put this into your calculator and we could get an answer, okay? All right, so what if you had to do this by hand? So I wanna show you that too, so you're aware of it, okay? So from above, from part A, we know that the velocity is positive 
from zero to pi over three, okay? So to get the total distance traveled, we can just integrate from zero to pi over three V of T dt, okay? Now, I also know from part A that the velocity was negative between pi over three and pi over two, right? So I know if I integrate that, the velocity function is below the x-axis. If I integrate it, it's gonna be negative, okay? So if I subtract it, okay, then that's gonna cause that negative integral to actually become positive, right? So that's what you can do. You can subtract any part that's below the x-axis, the integral that's for the, from um, where it's below the x-axis. If you integrate that, but you subtract it, you'll wind up making that become positive, okay? And we've talked about that in classes earlier in the year, okay? So then this is gonna be the integral from pi over three to pi over two, V of T DT, okay? All right, so um, what we can do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the graphing calculator and I'm gonna put this into the graphing calculator and we'll get an answer that way. Okay, so let's go and do that. So to get the integral of the, um, of the, to the total distance traveled, sorry. Okay, we're gonna integrate, so alpha window and then number four for function integrate, okay? And we're gonna integrate from zero to pi over two. Okay, and then our function, our velocity function is, um, and we gotta do, I'm sorry, we gotta do absolute value, right? So we gotta abs take the absolute value of this. So alpha window and then number one, and then we're gonna, it's the absolute value of six, sine of 3t, which is x in this case, okay? And then dx, right? Okay, so this, you know, here's another way of looking at this. Total distance traveled is the integral of speed. And remember speed, okay? Speed is the absolute value of velocity, okay? So you could do it that way. Okay, so in this case, we get six, right? 6.0000, okay? Now, let me show you how we could have done it, okay, um, without the absolute value, okay? And I'm gonna show you, you're gonna get the same number, okay? That's what's important, okay? Okay, so we could also do alpha window. And you know what, I take that back. Let's, let's press y equals, whoops. Okay, let's press y equals. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in and so we can just use Y instead of having to type it twice, okay? I'm gonna type in six sine of three X and close the parentheses. Okay, now I'm gonna go back. Okay, now this, I, so, so if you did that, this would have been absolute value of Y sub one, okay? So I'm gonna do alpha window function integrate number four, zero, to pi over three, and then y1, right? So alpha trace one, y1. Okay, and then dx. Okay, and then why are we, why again, why are we integrating from zero to pi over three? Because from zero to pi over three, this velocity function is, um, is positive, right? And so from pi over three to pi over two, it's negative. Okay, the integral would be negative because the function's below the x-axis and we're integrating left to right. Okay, so we need to subtract that integral. Okay, so alpha window four. Okay, and this one's gonna be pi over three. To pi over two. And then y1. And then dx. And it, okay, so it gives you actually the value of six, okay? Um, and if we rounded this, look, if we went four, if we went three decimal places, it would be six also, right? Okay, um, can't tell you exactly why. Mm, 
Yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I don't know why it actually, I thought it would give you the same decimal approximation because both these are, the calculator really does approximate it, okay? Um, but like up here, it's doing a really good approximation because it's thinking it's six, okay? It's just the way, it's the way somebody, whoever programmed how to do this, um, it's giving you two different values. But, but if you round the three decimal places, they're the same value, right? Okay. All right, so let's go back um, to our paper. And we'll so what we came up with from the graphing calculator was this is equal to six, okay? So it's, it traveled six units, okay, all together, okay? If you, if you talk about how far it went to the right and to the left, like that total distance, that would be six, okay, if you added them all up, okay? All right, let's go to example number two. Okay, for example two, a car is moving with initial velocity of five miles per hour and then accelerates at a rate of A of T is 3.2 T miles per hour per second for eight seconds. Okay, so the speed or the velocity is in miles per hour, and then they give you this acceleration, right? And the time units don't match. So you couldn't write this as like something like um, meters per hour squared or meters per second, okay? Or miles per hour, I should say miles, not meters, okay? All right, but, if we integrate acceleration, what we wind up with is the change in velocity, okay? Because the antiderivative of acceleration is velocity, right? Okay, so if we integrate, okay, from zero to eight, that would be, um, that would give us the, 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 the change in the velocity, okay? That's my point, okay? All right, so, um, here we go. Okay, so initial velocity, five miles per hour, right? So that this right here, initial velocity of five miles per hour means V sub O, or V sub O, V, sub, v of zero is equal to five, okay? So that would allow us to find the velocity because we know, we know a velocity that has a particular time, and then we're going to be able to figure out the change in velocity, okay? And then from that, we're going to be able to get um, get the get the velocity at eight seconds. Okay, so here we go. So we know from this that the integral from zero to eight a of t dt would wind up being v of eight minus v of zero, and we know v of zero is five. So if I move this over to the other side, I have V of eight by itself, okay? So what I know is V of eight is equal to, okay, V of zero plus the integral from zero to eight. And instead of writing A of T, I'm gonna write 3.2 T. Okay, so that would mean V of eight, I'm gonna come off to the side here, okay, so V, V, um, velocity at zero is five. So this would be five plus, okay, and we're going to integrate this. So this would be 3.2 T squared divided by two, 3.2 T squared divided by two. And we're going to evaluate that from zero to eight. Okay. We can reduce this because this is 1.6. Okay. So this is equivalent to five plus 1.6 t squared evaluated from zero to eight, okay? All right, so v of eight is equal to five plus, and then in here, we'd have 1.6 times eight squared, and then minus 1.6 times zero squared. Well, this is just zero, okay? So then this would give you five, plus, and then 1.6 times 64, right? Okay, and so that would give you five plus 102.4. Okay, which would give you 107.4 miles per Hour. Now you may wonder, okay, and I and I kind of thought of this too, okay. Well, are the units right? Okay, so what are these units right here? What are the A of T units? Okay, they're miles per hour over seconds, right? So this is mph over 
seconds, right? And so what's my DT in this case? For the acceleration graph, my DT is seconds. So you see how my seconds are gonna cancel when I multiply these and I would get a velocity miles per hour, okay? So now here's the thing, okay? Um, we wanna know how far did the car travel in those eight seconds, okay? So we don't need, um, we don't need the velocity at a particular time. We actually need the velocity function, okay? So the way we can get the velocity function is we can integrate from zero to t. We're gonna come up with a function, okay? A of x, okay, and then dx. So I'm, I'm creating a dummy variable, okay? So t represents where we stop integrating, okay? So this would equal v of t minus v of zero, okay? And again, we can get v of t, and what we're gonna have is a velocity function, okay? So I'm gonna move the minus v sub zero over to the other side, okay? And I'm gonna write v of t on the left-hand side though, okay? So v of t would equal, this v of t would equal v of zero, which we know is five, plus the integral from zero to t of a of x, which is 3.2x dx, okay? So this would become, okay, so we already did this integration right here, right? Okay, but instead of eight, it's gonna be t, okay? So this is gonna be five plus 1.6x squared instead of t squared, okay? Because we're integrating with respect to x. And then we're gonna evaluate this from zero to some time t, okay? So then v, this means v of t, would equal five plus 1.6 t squared, and I should put a bracket right here, minus 1.6 times zero squared. This is gonna cancel out, all right? And what we'll have is five plus 1.6 t squared. So we have our velocity function, v of t, is equal to 1.6 t squared plus five. Now let's see, does this work? Okay, because I know I know a velocity at um, five at, at zero, right? And at zero, velocity is five, right? If t was zero, this would be zero and it'd be five. That works. Okay, how about v of eight? Okay, so what's 1.6 times eight squared plus five? It's 107.4, 107.4 miles per hour, right? Okay, so. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're going to integrate this, okay? And we're gonna integrate the absolute value of this. So this becomes the integral from zero to eight, because I wanna know how far did the car travel in those eight seconds. So that's total distance, okay? So it's gonna be the absolute value of V of T, DT, Okay, so that'd be the integral, and we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this one in our calculator, okay? So zero to eight of the absolute value of 1.6 t squared plus five, close the absolute value, and dt. Okay, so let me tell you what this comes out to be. Okay, now, we gotta watch out. Okay, so v of t is miles per hour, okay? But the zero and eight are seconds. Okay, so when we get our answer here, this is going to be a weird unit. Okay, it's 300. If you put this in our calculator, okay, um, you know what? I'm going to go to my graphing calculator and we'll do that on the online. Okay, so just a second, we'll put that in our calculator. Okay, I'm going to erase this three right here. Okay, so we got 4696 over 15. Okay, so when we integrated it and changed it to a fraction, it became that, right? Okay, so we gotta realize this is a product, okay? What are the units on this? Okay, so this was the absolute value of velocity, right? So that's, this is miles per hour, okay? That's the absolute value piece. The DT is seconds, so times seconds. Okay, so what this is, the units on this is miles seconds per hour. But what the heck is a mile second per hour, right? Okay, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this. We, we, well, th and this is what's weird too. Mile seconds per hour is actually a distance. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert. Okay. And we're going to make everything. We're going to, we're going to cancel out these time units. Okay. So this is one second. Okay. So we're going to multiply by. Okay. And what we know is that one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes, right? And so what happens this hour cancels with this hour and now we're left with miles seconds per minute, okay? So then we're gonna multiply that by one minute over 60 seconds. Okay, and what happens here, the minutes cancel here and my seconds cancel here. Okay, so now what are we left with? Miles, okay? So this is equivalent to 4696 over, and it would be 15 times 60 times 60, right? And this would be miles. Okay, so we're gonna put that in our calculator. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a calculator. You grab one too, okay? And, um, so we have 46, 96, and then divide by, and then 15 times 60 times 60. And you need that, if you're dividing, you need to put that in parentheses, okay? So then this would turn out to be 0 0.087 miles. Okay, now that's not very far, right? Now think about this. The car is traveling in eight seconds. Okay, and the car was traveling five miles per hour. And then at eight, it was at eight seconds, it was going, well, it was going 107.4 miles per hour, right? He's breaking the speed limit quite a bit, okay? If you're only doing this for a short period of time, right? Are you gonna go very far? No, so this answer should make sense, okay? Because you wouldn't, in eight seconds and you're going miles per hour, you're not going to go that far. You're not going to go like five miles or anything, okay? So you're going to go less than a mile in, in just a few seconds. You're going to go less than a mile, unless you're going really super fast, right? Like you're in a jet, okay? Like the jets flew by today, right? Okay? All right, if you're going super fast, okay? Like I, I was, I was, it kind of tripped me out today. So when the jets flew by today, right, for honoring all the um, hospitals and all that, okay? They flew from Madeira to Merced in four minutes. Okay, four minutes. Madeira to Merced. That's like an hour's worth of driving. Okay, like that is fast. Four minutes. Okay, so they were flying, literally. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm done being stupid and silly with you guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hope you kind of enjoyed this. Hey, we got six lessons. That's it. Um, we're done. No tests. Woohoo. Okay. And the other thing I want to talk, talk to you guys about, cause this is the day after the AP exam. Okay. If any of you guys had problems, okay. Legitimate problems of submitting your Wi-Fi wasn't fast enough. You couldn't, they, the, the uploading of the photos wasn't fast enough. You, you have, and I'm going to send a message out to you, all of you. Okay. You have the option to request a retake. Okay. But you have to do it within 48 hours and you have to have a legitimate reason. Okay. You cannot say, you cannot say, all right, in your, in your, they're going to ask you why you cannot say, I ran out of time to submit. Don't write that. You won't get a second chance. Okay. They won't, they won't give you a retake. If you say I ran out of time, well, they will say you should have been paying attention to the time. Okay. So, um, but if you had Wi-Fi problems or you had, you just had uploading problems, you thought you were going to upload it one way and it, you couldn't do it that way. All right. Then just let them, well, just tell them you had problems with your Wi-Fi or uploading. Okay. And, and I, I have a gut feeling they want to know if you know calculus or not, and they want to give you every opportunity. I think they'll give you a retake in June. Okay. You won't know until May 25th that they'll accept it though. Okay. All right, guys, you know what? I'm proud of you. You know, you hung in there um, and you guys, you guys have just done a good job in the situation we're in. I, I'm proud of you guys. Okay. I just have to say that. All right. I'm getting a little choked up right now. Okay. All right. You guys take care. I will see you tomorrow. Hold your horses. I forgot to give you the assignment. <laughs>
Uh, guys, it's late in the day. I'm getting tired. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So today's assignment is I want you to do page 390, one through nine odd, 12 through 16 all. Okay. Not very many problems. Okay. And I'll send the solutions out. Okay. There is, I'm going to tell you, there's going to be one problem that's going to take you it, or one assignment that's going to take you a little bit of time. And it's this one, nine, three. Okay. But I'm giving you, I, well, I'll be signing that one on Friday and you have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday to work on it. Okay. All right, you guys. Now I'm signing off. All right. I'm done for the day. All right. You guys take care. Bye-bye.